are these people? J Street, Kamala Harris. What is the connection? Well, um, as you guys know, uh, APAC gets a lot of focus uh, in media given how much money they have spent towards buying off politicians. Pretty much, I would argue, most of them mm -hmm. in government, Kamala Harris included. You don't hear about J Street that much. And yeah. as I said earlier, J Street is kind of significant with Jamal Bowman as he took money initially from them. Uh, and then he went to Israel and saw the error of his ways and, you know, switched it up, but didn't help because now he's um, kind of a lame duck right now as he is planning to leave Congress uh, within the next couple of months. Um, but I did want to bring this article in terms of, in as much as we talk about uh, APAC, we don't talk about J Street nearly as much as I think we probably should. And I would argue J Street in a lot of ways is even more dangerous because they kind of walk the line between, you know, um, you know, you know, being defenders of Israel, but at the same time, you know, expressing concern, I would say, for Palestinians and wanting a two-state solution. So, and you can kind of hear that in terms of, you know, Kam uh, Kamala's rhetoric yeah. around Israel. But we'll get into that. So, Global uh, Solidarity in the bit. chat, J Street is a nonprofit liberal ad advocacy group whose stated aim is to promote American leadership to end the Arab, Israeli, and Israeli-Palestinian conflicts peacefully and diplomatically. Um, well, that's their that's stated. What they that's what they say, that's right. That's what they say. Yeah. Um, but we'll get into the article and kind of connect it to Kamala, and you can make, and I'm sure most of our audience is kind of in the know, but you guys can make, hopefully figure this out for yourself. Uh, J Street, in a way, is not much better than APAC. So, mm -hmm. the article is brought to you by Consortium News, written by Abed A. Solomon, who writes, Liberal Zionists cheer as Harris coddles genocidal Israel. Mm -hmm. For J Street's leadership, the current U.S. policy of enabling the slaughter of Palestinian civilians hits the spot, writes Abba A. Solomon. So, he continues... Hours after U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris gave her expectant speech at the DNC, the president of the pro-Israel, pro-peace organization J Street took a victory lap in an elusive email, effusive email to supporters. Wow, Jeremy Ben-Ami wrote, What a week. As J Streeters leave the Democratic National Convention fired up and ready to go, it's clear we're having a greater impact than ever. Wow. He added that the vice he added that the vice president's remarks on Israel-Palestine were perhaps the clearest articulation of J Street's values for a presidential nominee. Mm -hmm. But what are those values, and how do they apply to what's happening in Gaza? Let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, two-state solution. Got to have a two-state. Uh, cannot have a liberalized Palestinian state. Uh, probably for some ceasefire nonsense that, you know isn't really a thing there's been multiple ceasefires already through the history of gaza and guess what they're still being genocided funny that um you know so but anyway i'm sure we'll get to that so discussing gaza harris's dnc acceptance speech began with the adenine evocation of working on a ceasefire of gaza's wow. pounding that america is funding President Biden and I are working around the clock because now is the time to get a hostage deal and a ceasefire deal done. Blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. Fucking okay. Then came the ironclad pledge of eternal support for Israel, justified in this case by the October 7th Hamas raid. And let me be clear, and let me be clear, I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself, and I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself. Keita Harris's brief discussion of Gaza in her acceptance speech was the customary refusal in American political discourse to attribute the solder to the U.S. or to Israeli to, or its Israeli partner. Instead, there was a reference to what has happened, evoking victims without victimizers. 
in you this exist way. in the context of all so, in the oh you can might as well finish I, it. I, I, i've cut that shit off she don't need more than that you know well you're she says it about 18 times in a row most of the time so right well, you're going to hear a lot more of her, so it's just as well for about a couple of minutes. So, what a great I, picture I, they have on this! This is a lovely thumbnail they chose. I, um, I should have used that, probably. you know. But all the same, um, now I didn't watch the DNC because I was sick that week, fortunately, um, and I didn't see, I really didn't see much of her speech. Actually, come to think of it, um, just as well I didn't because. Didn't hear that it was that good, but we're going to isolate the part where she does talk about Israel. Right. So uh, this clip comes from, well, uh, Middle East. I clipped this out. Uh, so shout out to them for doing that. Um, so let's hear in full what Kamala has to say regarding uh, the Israeli Israel Gaza assault. Ooh. Respect. To the war in Gaza, President Biden and I are working around the clock because now is the time to get a hostage deal and a ceasefire deal done. And let me be clear, and let me be clear, I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself, and I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself. Because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7th. Yeah, fuck you. Including unspeakable sexual violence and the massacre of young people at a okay. music festival. At the same Sexual violence that has been purported to be a lie, but you know, okay, whatever. At the same time, what has happened in Gaza over the past 10 months is devastating. So many innocent lives lost. Desperate, hungry people fleeing for safety over and over I thought again. That was the scale of I thought that was Israel's right to defend itself. What happened? Right. But you, but you notice already how she goes into Hamas did this, Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. Yes. Before. But she talks about the suffering of Palestinians, but she doesn't say why. A part of this why is. Why are that they running? Why they, are they being slaughtered? They know that this gets clipped up, right? So clip A is I support Israel. Clip B mm -hmm. is Palestinian suffering is bad. Right. But again, it's the idea of why right. are they suffering? Yes. She doesn't yeah, say that. The soundbite won't be anything about that. It'll be, you know, they're suffering. That's Come bad. On. Right. Or right. it'll be, I stand with Israel. You know, it just depends on which people they're t trying to pander to that minute. So you can't talk out of both sides of your mouth faster, honestly. You know? Right. So it's literally right after the, each other. It's ridiculous. Suffering is heartbreaking. Uh, yeah. President Biden and I are working to end this war. So While he's on vacation at the beach? Pretty hard to do that from there. I'm just saying, you know. That Israel is secure, the hostages are released, the suffering in Gaza ends, and the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination. But not their own liberation. So. Yeah. So. I actually do have thoughts on this, but I'll save that to the end. Um, but yep. let's continue with the article. I just wanted to show that because, again, I didn't see the acceptance speech, and I'm not going to, but I think it's good to kind of highlight what she was saying there in light of this article. But anyway, after pledging unconditional support for Israel's military, Harris expressed sorrow as if the horrors of being in afflicted by a force of nature not a military force right. that the U.S. government supplies with fundamental <laughs> and essential support. Yeah. That aside, yeah. what Harris articulated about Israel-Palestine in her speech was no different from what President Joe Biden has been saying and doing since last fall while enabling the slaughter of Palestinian civilians. 
the vehement enthusiasm from J Street, perhaps the USA's leading liberal Zionist organization, is illuminating. Harris carefully omitted any mention of the only way that the U.S. government can actually put the end to the suffering in Gaza that she called heartbreaking, an arms embargo to stop the huge shipments from the United States that provide the Israeli, Israeli military with the weapons and ammunition it's using to continue to massacre Palestinian people of all ages. The Harris speech was consistent with the National Party's new platform, which J Street helped shape. Ben Ami proudly wrote, but full affirmation of Biden's policies toward the Gaza carnage should not have been any cause of celebration. As a Palestinian American who is elected Democrat to Colorado State House, it has been disheartening to witness Biden facilitate and abet Israel's brutal war on Gaza with billions of dollars in U.S. weapons, Iman Johe wrote during the convention. Mm. Harris said arms embargo, which human rights organizations have been calling for, is off the table, but that she supports a ceasefire. However, to truly reach a ceasefire and prevent a regional conflict, the U.S. must halt the arms shipment that fuel the conflict. They won't. The British medical journal The Lancet estimates that well over 100,000 residents of Gaza will die because of the Israeli bombardment and siege since October 7th, as hunger and disease are endemic and housing and infrastructure have been systematically destroyed. Kamala literally, so, in interview, said that she would not stop shipments of arms to Israel. So, right. uh, you know. So, so this is Jeremy and Ami, Ami, Ami uh, who is associated with J Street, uh, yeah. who tweeted, couldn't be prouder of VP Harris for her remarks on Israel Palestine and of Democrats' reaction. This is what this is what it means in 2024 to be pro-Israel, pro-peace, and pro-democracy. Uh huh. Uh, Tells you what's first, okay. don't it? What what comes first right. for them? Like pro-Israel. Yes, first and foremost, that's what they require. Right. At the convention, the parents of a hostage held by Hamas since October 7th spoke. Actually, that was, um... Yes. What's his face? Yeah. I forgot his name. Mm -hmm. uh, who died this week or over the weekend. Who Israel bombed, um, yes. Yes. But no Palestinian American was allowed to say anything. In effect, the convention's podium was a place of apartheid, mirroring the reality of Israel's apartheid system. Funny how that works. In, his, in this email, Ben Ami wistfully noted the missed opportunity. Hosting the first ever Palestinian speaker at a national convention would have been a powerful way to underscore the shared goal of an immediate ceasefire and hostage deal and the compassion of the party feels for Palestinians and Israelis alike. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. To underscore the shared goal of an immediate ceasefire. Yes. By not having a, a Palestinian speak. Which I, I saw the other day, too, that uh, people were bringing up ceasefire and the arms deal shipment, being like those two mm -hmm. don't coincide. And all the pro-Israel ones are like, people are acting like ceasefire means complete disarmament. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, we, the, the, those of us who are actually paying attention know that's not the case. Like, and which is why we have an issue with it. So, but yeah, I mean, just oxymorons everywhere, practically. Yeah. So. JST is determined to help ensure that liberal Zionism does not question the ironclad U.S. commitment to Jewish nationalist control in Palestine, as discussed in articles I co-wrote that were published 10 years ago and last spring. Yeah. The organization is eager to define the limits of acceptable criticism of Israeli government policies from the Democratic Party establishment, setting aside human rights considerations as secondary to the mantra of Israel's quote-unquote right to exist. Whether apartheid South Africa had a quote unquote right to exist is not a topic open for discussion. 
J Street represents untenable liberal American Zionism that clings to the fantasy of a democratic and humane, quote unquote, Jewish state. Washington police office holders pledged continued weapons resupply for that fantasy Jewish state with no connection to the actual Israel that is now engaged in remorseless, in remorseless genocide. Um, so this is a tweet. Yeah. You sent. There was actually something else that um, I saw earlier today, but I forgot to the upload bullet. it. So maybe I will post it on... I think I saw it on Instagram. So okay. I'll post it on Twitter later, if not tomorrow, if I remember. Yeah. Uh, this is from at BlackRedGuard1, uh, who said, Quit saying permanent ceasefire. Say the victory of the Palestinian people and their army, because that's the only way a permanent ceasefire will happen. Right. Um, so, yeah, I had some thoughts on this um, this morning, actually. Um, okay. Um, I would argue, given this article, that J Street has probably slightly more of an influence on Kamala than APAC does. Sure. Because APAC is definitely, like, right-wing, hawkish, like, pro-Israel to the T, like, fuck the Palestinians, like, all of that. Like, they make it very clear. Like, they do not care about the Palestinians at all. J Street, as I said earlier, kind of toes the lines of, yes, we're pro-Israel and we want Israel the right to exist, but, oh, these poor Palestinians, we must also help them to determine, like, a two-state solution and all that other bullshit. And that's exactly what you have heard Kamala say, basically, throughout her campaign, in terms of Israel must have a right to exist, but at the same time, you know, the carnage that the Palestinians are going through is horrible without any mention as to why yeah. the Palestinians are suffering. Well, uh, it, again, at the arm of the Israeli government. It preys upon, like, this liberal need for, like, everyone's got to get along, you know, mm -hmm. if, if we can just come to the table and, uh, you know, uh, break bread, it'll all be fine. You know, it, it's, they're, uh, they're preying off these, like, liberal empty emotions of like joy and that kind of stuff Vibes. right where <laughs> it frustrates me because it's like you don't it, it's just that you don't understand how this conflict has been working you know right. so but it's it's they have to appear uh, you know to have some ethics like right. uh, so uh, it's it's somewhat more disgusting to me. Not that Kamala isn't equally as controlled by APAC, but she has to have a public position, you know? Right, and it so, kind of makes sense given the party, the Democratic Party as a, as a institution, like the idea how typically they always kind of toe the line on things. It's like, and again, I say toe the line in terms of what their donors want them to do, but giving the illusion that they actually give a shit about what the people want and right. kind of playing that progress faux progressiveness. Well, um, me, me and mean you have called out like, that ceasefire like language the minute it came out. We were like, mm -hmm. they're going to use that shit to like, and also, you know, we've talked about how they're going to just blame it on figureheads. We, we've talked about how there's a lot of, of, narrative management over this to where they really just want to continue what they're doing and they're willing to run out the clock on everyone. So right. I also, you know, we, we've heard recently a lot of people when it comes to like, uh, uh, you know, for Jill Stein to use her vote as use her votes as leverage to Kamala to uh, get a ceasefire. Yeah, yeah, ceasefire, which, and I said this to you, uh, mm -hmm. but to quote our patron Saint Kwame Toure, right? Uh, like to go into it, and I'm going to paraphrase what he said the idea of, you know, making amends with you essentially your enemy is essentially thinking that they have a conscience, conscience, and they which don't, they don't, and they don't, yeah. So, 
So to me, and like that's where Nora Ericott, uh, who was a potential VP pick for the Greens, went wrong, which I was really surprised with because she right. was making that same case of, oh, like if we get a ceasefire, then we can tell the Democratic Party that we'll we will back vote you. For Kamala. Right, and, then, Which, and the Greens who's to say credit for, they like, don't just give them a you. ceasefire for that exact purpose, and then the minute she's in office, they go back to doing what they're doing. Right. Like what's stopping so, that? Right. So, so, but the other thing that I was thinking of today was because so many people, like our colleagues in the space, have basically reported pretty much every day. Yeah. But Kamala still doesn't have any policies listed on her website. Um, she has merch. <laughs> so you can buy merch, but you don't know as of now, like, what she stands for as far as policy. And I forgot who said this today that I was watching or listening to. And they made a great point in terms of she and I would argue the Democratic Party have to essentially wait, quote unquote, to hear what their donors want. Yeah. And then somehow make the spin. And this is where this is how we get the crumbs that we get, because they know what generally what the Democratic base wants. I would yeah. argue the Democratic base, like not talking about them, talking about people like us who are generally even if they're probably more liberal in thinking, yeah. generally want more progressive policy more often than not. But especially in this case, and then eight, and I think the statistic I saw is eight in ten people are again are for an arms embargo to Israel. Yeah. So on so both it's sides an, of the so aisle. The pretty sure. of, right. The donors, J Street, basically want the idea, you know, like to Israel to fight right to defend itself, ergo, sending more weapons. But yeah. also, they need to make the chance of, oh, we can totally seemingly be against what the people want, so what's the middle ground, or what's the compromise here? And I think the compromise, as you said, is the language of ceasefire or, and or, a two-state solution, which, also thinking about this, has any Palestinian, to your knowledge, and maybe this could be worth looking into more? Mm -hmm. uh, and, like I know, of so, I know of some. Do Palestinians want a two-state solution? No, unless because, they're in bed with Israel. That's about it. Right, right. And so, I feel I, honestly, I feel like that's a well worth. There's a conversation with someone who there's is an article Palestinian to ask in them, Mint, like there's an article in Mint Press about like Palestinian people that are like in bed with Israel for propaganda purposes that talk about stuff like that. So we could look into right. that and, and well, do that. Well, I know that, but like people, like actual Palestinians on the ground who are not connected to a party at all. And I think, again, as I said, I think this is a worthwhile if we're able to interview someone to ask them this question, like, yeah. what is your feeling about a two-state solution that Kamala and the Democratic Party have been pushing? And what are you for? Like, I, feel I like think you'd you you'd get some answer, answers answers saying like that's probably all we can get, right? Like mm -hmm. that might be some of the responses. Like if that ends the suffering sure. right now, they'll take it, right? But again, and you know me, you yeah. know, like what's the grand prize? Like what is the vision? You know, for Palestine, and if we're talking about liberation for Palestine, what does that look like? What does that mean to them? Like, yeah. I don't want to hear from the party like what they believe, in this case, the solution is. Because obviously the solution is, you know, like, bombing bombing the shit out of uh, Gaza and now the West Bank and then let the chips fall where they may, but in the guise of I, I don't know, I actually don't know, but all we know is essentially bomb it. Whereas a Palestinian might have a different view as to what their liberation would look like. So I think that's a well worth well I think that's a worthwhile discussion slash conversation that should be had. More yeah. and again, no Palestinians that are connected to 
the party or politics at all in that way, but rather just people, regular people on the ground who are educated and know the situation, who actually do have solutions into what that liberation for themselves looks like. That yeah. is what we should be asking and talking about, not hearing from politicians as far as what the solution, quote unquote, is, which actually isn't a solution at all. Um, but to me, as I said, a two-state solution is basically a Palestinian version of Jim Crow, like yep. separate but equal. Right. So it should be ideal. Well, I think it was Savvy that brought up this point, whereas like for Black people, like we in this country, we don't have Jim Crow anymore, but are Black people really liberated? You can make the argument, no. So there's obviously some work to do. So even with the idea of a secular state where Israelis and Palestinians are, quote unquote, living together, like, even with that, it's just kind of like, what will that look like? What was like, that? Will Tory they go quote. through these similar issues in terms of what black people go through in this country, even then? You can so, have you can have peace without liberation. Does that make it, you know, like I, I forget right. that whole back and forth he has with someone, but yeah, man, I mean, clearly the solution for Israel is the final one. That sounds like what they're going with. So I don't know. Uh, you know, I think it's going to require again for an intervention, which, uh, you know, hopefully comes soon, in my opinion. But yeah. But anyway, Ugh. let us know what you guys think. Again, as I said, J Street is probably more dangerous than APAC probably is. Yeah. Uh, but tell us what you think. Um, and what do you like? Has this made you think differently in terms of the Israeli lobby. And obviously, you know, like APAC is definitely uh, a major player in what's happening with, related to Gaza right now. Um, but either way, share your thoughts um, in the chat or in the comments if you're watching the clip of this. And if you want to support us, please feel free to scan the QR code that you see on your screen. Or go to the link at your bottom of your screen where you can donate to the network. Uh, if you're in chat, you can type uh, exclamation point donate and the link will appear if you also want to donate that way. Um, YouTube basically said we are not promoting or pushing your anything that you guys do. So the only way that we're able to continue to grow is through you guys, through um, for sharing our content, subbing to us, and, you know, following us on Twitter. And don't forget to like and subscribe to us uh, to fight the suppression that we are experiencing on YouTube. And be sure to make, leave a comment. We do read them. Um, some of them, you know, especially if you have ideas for stories, we would love to hear um, because, <sighs> like, a lot of these stories are so freaking depressing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and help us get to free K. Um, so thank you and thanks for watching.